Well, happy vernal equinox. <coughs> happy first day of spring. And a blessed feast of the supreme ritual and a feast for the equinox of the gods. <coughs> we've been, as a segue into what we've been uh, uh, reading from this, uh, these last few days. And today we're going to, uh, on this date, uh, March 20th, uh, 1904, era vulgara, Crowley, at his wife's instructions and uh, uh, visions and clairvoyant uh, counsel, performed or celebrated the invocation of Horus. Now, leading up to this was a series of visions by Rose. I won't go into that because I, I really want to uh, just uh, actually celebrate that supreme uh, uh, supreme ritual. Uh, but anyway, according to the diaries and everything, uh, on the 19th, they wrote out the ritual. And uh, on the 20th, it says, revealed. And then his notes that he took later, cannot make out if this revelation comes from W, that's his wife, the W is for Urada, which means rose. But almost certainly the former as it precedes the great success entry. So in other words, on the 20th, they say great success. Uh, in midnight invocation. And another diary will say it was a 10 p.m. Uh, invocation. And so midnight might have been a loose phrase, he says. Uh, or perhaps it was the climax of the ritual. Also in the notes for 20th, he says, uh, I am to formulate a new link of an order with the solar force. His notes, again, which uh, were written later, it's not clear what happened in this invocation, but it is evident from another note of certainly a later date, that great success does not mean samadhi. For P writes, uh, I make it an absolute condition that I should uh, attain samadhi in the God's own interests. His memory concurs in this. It was the samadhi obtained in October 2006 that where it finally hit, okay? And that set him again on the path of obedience. Uh, but that great success means something very important is clear enough. Okay. At this point, we may insert the ritual, which was so successful on the 20th. Now, uh, what follows right here immediately is uh, Rose's answer to various questions posed by Crowley. Well, let's, he calls Rose W and he calls himself P. So this is W's answer to various questions posed by P. Okay. Here's her answers. Invocation of Horus according to the divine vision of W the seer to be performed before a window, open to the east or north without incense. Remember, this is in a hotel suite in uh, Cairo, Egypt. The room is to be filled with jewels, but only diamonds to be worn. A sword, unconsecrated. 44 pearl beads to be told. Stand bright daylight at 12.30 noon, locked doors, white robes, bare feet, be very loud, Saturday, 
use the sign of Apophis and Typhon. Now that's her, that, that's her ideas that she uh, uh, channeled a few days ahead. There it was on uh, on Saturday. Now uh, these are Crowley's ideas for uh, for the ritual. Preliminary. Banish with the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram, lesser banishing ritual of the hexagram, flaming sword, or ritual of coming down the tree of life, abrahadabra, that's the union of the five and the six, invoke as before. Now those were Crowley's ideas and Rose says, omit. And this is what led Crowley to say, Okay, I'm going to trust you on this, Rose. Uh, I'll do it, but I'll just do it to show you that if you break all these Golden Dawn kind of uh, protocols, nothing's going to happen. So, here's Crowley. Here's how it starts. Unprepared. And uninvoking, because she told him, don't prepare, don't bathe, don't, don't, don't do all the stuff that you usually do. <clears throat> Unprepared and uninvoking the I O M, Frater R R at A C, am here in thy presence, for thou art everywhere, O Lord Horus, to confess humbly before thee my neglect and scorn of thee. How shall I humble myself enough before thee? Thou art the mighty and unconquered Lord of the universe. I am a spark of thine unutterable radiance. How should I approach thee? But thou art everywhere. But thou hast graciously deigned to call me unto thee, to this exorcism of art that I may be thy servant, thine adept, O bright one, O son of glory. Thou hast called me, should I not then hasten to thy presence? With unwashen hands I come unto thee, and I lament my wandering from thee. But thou knowest, yea, I have done evil. If if one who is much obsessed by Mars saw Horus as, uh, excuse me, if, I'm going to find the end of this sentence here. If one blasphemed thee, why should I therefore forsake thee? But thou art the avenger, all is with thee. Now the one he's referring to is McGregor Mathers, okay, who who uh, saw Horus as a, as a martial aspect, as a Mars uh, associated with Gebur on the Tree of Life. And uh, Crowley uh, had a terrible falling out with, with Mathers. So Crowley had neglected, purposefully neglected the god of his, his uh, uh, villainous enemy, magician. So it's true. Crowley has neglected him. And when Rose was first starting to get her, uh, uh, her visions, she suggested, oh, Horace is mad at you, Al. He's pissed off. You've neglected him. And that sort of rang a bell in Crowley's head and said, how the hell should Rose know something that subtle? Oh, but I digress. I bow my neck before thee, and as once thy sword was upon it. It's a golden dawn ritual, or the, the Hyrus, uh, the, the, uh, the officer that plays Horus, uh, uh, puts a sword on the neck of uh, the candidate as they're taking their oath. Okay. I bow my neck before thee, 
and as once thy sword was upon it, so am I in thy hands. Strike if thou wilt, spare if thou wilt, but accept me as I am. My trust is in thee. Shall I be confounded? This ritual of art, this forty and fourfold invocation, this sacrifice of blood, these I do not comprehend. It is enough if I obey thy decree. Did thy fiat go forth for my e eternal misery? Were it not for my joy to execute thy sentence upon myself? For why? For that all is in thee and of thee. It is enough if I burn up in the intolerable glory of thy presence. Enough, I turn toward thy promise. Doubtful are the words, dark are the ways, but in thy words and ways is light. Thus then, now as ever, I enter the path of darkness, if haply so I may attain the light. Hail. Now the ritual starts in earnest and I'm going to pause to mention at this point that there is a Kabbalistic mathematic uh, format to the how the ritual is structured even poetically. And there's phrases and refrains, choruses uh, that are all done in groups of five, letters of five, phrases of five, interspersed with responses, phrases of six. And the union of five and six is the magic word abrahadabra. As if even uttering the word abrahadabra is a vocal vibration of the union of five and six. But I digress. Strike, strike the master chord, draw, draw the flaming sword, crown child and conquering lord, Horus, avenger. O thou with the head of the hawk, thee, thee I invoke. And at every thee, thee I invoke, he gives the sign of Apophis and Typhon. I'll begin again. O oh, thou head of the hawk, thee, thee I invoke. Thou only begotten child of Osiris thy father and Isis thy mother, he that is was slain, she that bore thee in her womb, flying from the terror of the water, thee, thee I invoke. O oh, thou whose apron is of flashing white, whiter than the forehead of the morning, thee, thee I invoke. O thou who hast formulated thy father and made fertile thy mother, thee, thee I invoke. O thou whose garment is of gold, golden glory with the azure bars of sky, thee, thee I invoke. Thou who didst avenge the horror of death, thou slayer of Typhon, thou who didst lift thine arms and the dragons of death were as dust. Thou who didst raise thine head and the crocodile of Nile was a base before thee, thee, thee I invoke. O thou whose nemesis hideth the universe with night, the impermeable blue, thee, thee I invoke. Thou who travelest in the boat of Ra, abiding at the helm of the Aftet boat and of the Sektet boat, thee, thee I invoke. 
O thou who bearest the wand of double power, thee, thee I invoke. Thou about whose presence is shed the darkness of blue light, the unfathomable glory of the outermost ether, the untraveled, the unthinkable immensity of space, thou who concentrateth all thy thirty aethers into one darkling sphere of fire, thee, thee I invoke. O thou who bearest the rose and the cross of life and light, thee, thee I invoke. Now those phrases are formatted A, B, C, D, E, and then under each of those, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's how it's formatted. They're actually in the margins, arranged in that way. And at the end of that process is another poem that says, The voice of the five, the voice of the six. Eleven are the voices, Abrahadabra. Section two, strike, strike the master chord, draw, draw the flaming sword, crown child and conquering lord, Horus, avenger. By the, thy name Ra, I invoke thee, Hawk of the Sun, the Glorious One. By thy name Harmachus, Youth of the Brilliant Morning, I invoke thee. By thy name Mao, I invoke thee, Lion of the Midday Sun. By thy name Tum, Hawk of the Even, Crimson Splendor of the Sunset, I invoke thee. By thy name, Kephra, I invoke thee, O beetle of the hidden mastery of midnight. By thy name, Haru Pa Krat, Lord of Silence, beautiful child that standeth on the dragons of the deep, I invoke thee. By thy name, Apollo, I invoke thee, O man of strength and splendor, O poet, O father. By thy name, of Phoebus, that drivest thy chariot through the heavens of Zeus, I invoke thee. By thy name, Odin, I invoke thee, O warrior of the north, O renown of the sagas. By thy name, Yeheshua, O child of the flaming star, thee, I invoke thee. By thine own, thy secret name, Huri, Thee, thee I invoke. The names are five. The names are six. Eleven are the names. Abra, Hadabra. Behold, I stand in the midst. Mine is the symbol of Osiris to thee. Are mine eyes ever turned? Unto the splendor of Geburah, the magnificence of Hesed, the mystery of Da'ath, thither I lift up mine eyes. This I have sought, and I have sought the unity. Hear thou me. Mine is the head of the man, and my insight is keen as a hawk's. By my head I invoke thee. I the only begotten child of my father and mother, by my body I invoke thee. About me shines the diamonds of radiance, white and pure, by their brightness I invoke thee. Mine is the red triangle reversed, sign given of none, save it be of thee, O Lord. By thy lamin I invoke. Mine is a garment of white, sewn with gold, the flashing abai I wear. By my robe I invoke thee. Mine is the sign of Apophis and Typhon. By the sign I invoke thee. 
mine is a turban of white and gold, and mine the blue vigor of the intimate air. By my crown I invoke thee. My fingers travel on the beads of pearl, so run I after thee in thy car of glory. By my fingers I invoke thee. By the spells I invoke thee. I bear the wand of double power in the voice of the master, Abrahadabra. By the word I invoke thee. Mine are the dark blue waves of music in the song that I made of old to invoke thee. Strike, strike the master chord, draw, draw the flaming sword, crown child and conquering Lord Horus, avenger. By the song I invoke thee. In mine hand is thy sword of revenge, let it strike at thy bidding, by the sword I invoke thee. The voice of five, the voice of six, eleven are the voices, Abra Hadabra. Section four is a repeat of section one only it's said in the first person. In other words, the format of this invocation starts off by saying, oh God, you're so big, you're so God, you got a great looking hat and everything. You've got all of this, you've got all of this. And in the process of the invocation, you get to the point of where you're saying, I'm, it's me, it's, I've invoked you, okay? I'm now talking about this in the first person. So this section would be, mine is the head of the hawk, Abrahadabra. I am the only begotten child of Osiris, Abrahadabra. I am the only begotten son of Isis, Abrahadabra. Mine is the apron of flashing white, Abrahadabra. I have formulated my father and made fertile my mother, Abrahadabra. Mine is a garment of golden glory, Abrahadabra. I avenge the horror of the death, Abrahadabra. Mine is the nemesis that hideth the universe with night, the impermeable blue, Abrahadabra. I bear the wand of double power, Abrahadabra. About me, is shed the darkness of, of blue light, Abrahadabra. I bear the rose and cross of life and light, the voice of the five, the voice of the six, eleven are the voices, Abrahadabra. And remember at each Abrahadabra, the sign of Apophis and Typhon is given. Therefore I say unto thee, come thou forth and dwell in me, so that every my spirit, so that every my spirit, whether of the firmament or of the ether or of the earth or under the earth on dry land or in the water or whirling air or of rushing fire and every spell and scourge of God, the vast one, may be thou, Abrahadabra. Then there was an impromptu adoration. And then I think he intended to close with a banishing ritual, but Urada said, no, don't banish. Anyway, we'll talk a little bit more because we're coming up on lots of other historical events leading up to the reception of the Book of the Law. Uh, 
and we're going to, in in April and such. So uh, there's a lot more uh, Thelemic High Holy Days uh, uh, fun uh, ahead of us. But for today, enjoy the first day of spring. It looks like the first day of spring out there. Uh, it won't last long. There's two more storms <laughs> coming our way. But anyway, until we uh, till we meet again tomorrow, hopefully, continue to be good to yourself, be good to each other. Abrahadabra. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law, love under will. And on this most holy day, the Lord bless you. The Lord enlighten your minds and comfort your hearts and sustain your bodies. The Lord bring you to the accomplishment of your true wills. The great work, the summum bonum, true wisdom and perfect happiness.